Hey guys, this is test 40, game 2. This is the cold medications game. It is an ordering game, and it also has a selection component as well, because we have seven medications, we're picking five of them, so five are in, two are out, and then we're also ranking the five that we do pick in order from one to five, from best to worst. So, I've laid out some things here, but I'm going to explain all of them. The first is that we have L on 2, so I put L on slot number 2 right here. We have F or G on 1, so F slash G. I is in, so I just put I to the side there. Then we have H before G, if both of them are present, K before F, if both are present, and if we have M, then we have both F and H in. So this is essentially our you know, initial bare bones setup for the game. There are a few additional inferences that we can make though. If we do have H before G, and we know that in that H, if H and G were both in and H was before G, as it must be, then of course, we know a few additional things. We know that we will have F in and F will be on one, because G wouldn't be on one in that instance. We would have L on two as always. Then we would have H before G, occurring on 3, 4, and 5 somewhere, and then we'd also have I somewhere within all of that because I is always in. Now if we have K before A, F, and both of them in, of course, G would have to be on 1, since F wouldn't be able to be on 1. We would then have L on 2 as always. Then we would have K before F occurring somewhere on 3, 4, 5. And then, of course, we'd also have to have I as a result as well. So in this diagram, we know that we would have to have both M and H out. And then in the other diagram regarding H before G, we would have to have, in that instance, both K and M out because we'd already have five things in. So the top diagram here with H before G has F1, L2, H before G, as well as I occurring on 3, 4, 5. In the K before F situation, we've got G1, L2, K before F on 3, 4, 5, and then I thrown in somewhere as well, forcing M and H to be out. And then, of course, we have M requiring F and, A, F and H in general. So, if M was in and F and H were in also, we know that we would have to have L on 2 in this situation. We know that we would have to have F on 1. And then we'd have M, H, and I occurring somewhere else. I know that F would have to be on 1 because there simply isn't room for G in this situation at all. G would have to be out, as would K, just because we have only five, room for five things right up here. So these are not the only three possibilities for the game with regard to selection. But, at the same time, these are three major possibilities regarding what happens when these rules are each activated. So this is what I would consider the full initial setup for the game with some inferences. Now question number six is a typical orientation question. Just take one rule at a time, apply it to all five choices looking for violations. So we know, of course, that L is always on two, initial rule for the game. So for that reason, choice A is automatically eliminated as it does not have L on 2. We also know that we always have to have I, period. So for that reason, we can eliminate choice B, which doesn't even mention I at all. We know that if K and F are both present, K must go before F. Choice E violates this, having both present yet having F before K, so E is gone then we also know that if M is in, F and H also have to be in. Choice C and D both mention M, yet choice C has M, but not H, so C is gone, leaving D by elimination for number seven, I mean number six. Now number seven is a general could be true question. We don't have too much that can help us out here. We can of course scan through our valid scenario from choice D of number six, to see if we get any hits there. So choice 6D did not have G before M, it did not have H before F, did not have I before F, not K before G, not M before G. So no hits from question six choice D, unfortunately. 
So we may want to do a little additional proof here to see what could be true. Choice A of number 7, G before M, does not actually work. It turns out that G and M can never both be in together, and we actually see this right over here on the bottom left of the screen. M requires both F and H, and you saw that in that scenario when M was in, G was forced out and K was forced out. So for that reason, we can never have G with M, nor can we have K with M. So for that reason, choice A is eliminated off the bat. Next, for B, H before F. Have we ever seen it happen in any of these? None of these three doesn't necessarily mean it's not possible, so I'd create a diagram for this. Now, if H is before F, that would automatically mean that we have to have G on 1. Because if F was on 1, nothing would be before it. So if G's on 1, L's on 2, then we had H before F, as well as I occurring on 3, 4, and 5. Does that work? Well, we have H and G both in, so that we're activating this thing here. Yet, G's on 1. G is not after H. We do not have H before G. So for that reason, choice B actually is not possible, and we can eliminate B off the bat. Next, choice C, I before F. We'll try that out. Have we ever seen it happen before? Yes, it actually is possible. Not on the bottom diagram here, not on the top one, but in this second one right here with K before F. We could have G1, L2, K, I, F, for example, on 3, 4, 5, or I, K, F on 3, 4, 5. Either way, it works perfectly fine, so C is our answer for number 7. I will look at the rest, though. For D, K before G. K before G would require, of course, F to be on 1, so that G would come later. We'd have L on 2. Then we would just have, you know, K before G on 3, 4, 5, and then I would occur somewhere there as well. The problem is that when K and F are both present, we need to be fitting this second scenario right here, which we are not doing, of course. We have F on 1, not G on 1. So for that reason, D is eliminated for number 7. And then choice E, M before G, of course, doesn't work for the same reason that A didn't work. M and G are mutually exclusive due to this bottom scenario here. So C is our answer for number 7. Next, number 8, what must be chosen? General must be true question. So we already know from question 6, choice D, where we had F, L, I, H, M, we already know that we do not need to have G and we do not need to have K. So for that reason, both B and D are automatically eliminated for number 8. Now, for the remaining choices, you know, F, H, M, we can look at our other scenarios here, since these are all valid. Now, the bottom one has all three of them, so that's not going to help us. The second one lacks both M and H, so we can eliminate this automatically. Both C and E are gone, leaving A as our answer for number 8. And of course, we could have also eliminated M due to the top scenario here as well. So, although we did not make the initial inference that F has to be in just because that would have taken too much work, we now know that F is always in period, so we can add it on our main, main diagram next to the letter I, which is always in. Next, number nine, a complete and accurate list of things that could be on five. So we've already seen back from question six, choice D, that M could be five. So any choice not mentioning M is automatically gone, which gets rid of D for number nine. Now, beyond that, a little bit tricky, although we do know that F could pretty much be anywhere. In you know, Across all the scenarios we see here, we know F could be first from the bottom diagram. We know F could be any of 3, 4, 5 for the second diagram. So M, F could certainly be 5. Any choice lacking F is automatically gone. So both B and C are eliminated for number 9 down to A and E. We can try to make a scenario. The difference between them, of course, is that E mentions letter I, whereas A does not. So if we can make I work on 5, we're totally good. So I'm going to do a scenario with I on 5. And of course, we already have an inkling that I on 5 will work from all three of these scenarios right here. No particular reason to believe that I could not be on 5. So for that reason, we're totally good. I on 5 works. The list lacking I is bad. Therefore, E is our answer for number 9.
Next, number 10, if i is third, could be true except question. So let's put i on 3, see what happens. Of course, i on 3 could happen pretty much anywhere. No particular reason to believe it's bad. So we can just try to run through the choices and see what cannot be true. So could m be higher than h? Well, let's make a scenario and find out. We could have, if m is in, both f and h have to be in, of course. I could put m on 4, h on 5, and of course f on 1, 1 since f must be in. Does this work? Yes, of course, m could be before h. Works perfectly fine, so a is gone. I'll see if this scenario helps with any other things. i before f, of course, did not happen. h before m did not. g before k did not. But of course, there is no reason to believe that this is bad. So we'll see if any if we you know could perhaps switch around M and H. No reason to think that we couldn't. If we put H on four and M on five, what happens then? Seems to work. We can check into the rules. M's in requires F and H, that's fine. These two are not activated. We're totally good. So for that reason, D can be eliminated as well. We could also eliminate that actually due to question six, choice D which also has H before him and has this very scenario as a matter of fact. Now from question number seven, we had a scenario a little bit different from this one here. We could have had G on one, L on two, and then have, you know, I before F as well as K occurring on three, four, five. So we'll just leave I on three and then K and F become interchangeable on four and five. So this one helps us out a bit more now because we see that i before f is perfectly fine. We could have i on 3, f on 4, or i on 3, f on 5. Either way, choice c is gone. We also see from this that g before k for choice e is gone, leaving b by process of elimination. And then if we want a scenario where this is actually occurring, we could easily put f back on 1, l on 2, i on 3, and then have g and k interchangeable on 4 and 5. The problem though that results then is that when we have k and f both present we need to have k before f. So it's impossible to ever have k before both f and g given that f, one of f or g has to be first at all times. So for that reason b is impossible in general is our answer for number 10.